G'day everyone, I am the Anti Theocrat, back with another one. Um, I'm going to put our title page up on this one just to give us something to think about for a tick. Uh, this is a, a favourite saying of my father's. X is an unknown quantity, spurt is a drip under pressure. It was his way of describing experts. So, um, I think you'll understand why I'm using this in about two and a half seconds so let's open our uh, abc um, news analysis shall we uh, i am a critical thinking expert this is how you win any climate change debate like greta thunberg now you've just undermined the idea that you were a critical thinker immediately in this title a what you're going to do is give us a, a few uh, easy um, phrases from the doctrine that we can uh, throw at people to try and bring them around to their belief in Christ oh, sorry I mean belief in climate change um, we're just gonna we're gonna train the door knockers with uh, half a dozen really good uh, catchphrases from the holy text sorry uh, the climate change doctrines and they're going to go door knocking and they're going to take some pamphlets and um yeah welcome to christmas at your family's house house what fun anyway uh peter ellerton peter ellerton is the, the guy who wrote this uh so critical thinking expert apparently um oh, by the way the reason i'm not impressed by greta thunberg thinking in terms of um argument is she has nothing original or her own to say about it it is all taken from doctrine it is all scripted nothing nothing that girl does is new interesting or her own work she has no particular depth when she's asked questions that are off the script. She's got no depth at all. She's a fucking retard. She's one of them door knockers. She's a street preacher. That's all she is. And if you think that's critical thinking, you don't know critical thinking. As bushfires rage and our cities lie shrouded in smoke, climate change is shaping up as a likely topic of conversation at the family dinner table this Christmas. Or the fires are, or at my dinner table, they weren't, or climate change. The reason climate change is going to be part of this discussion at your Christmas dinner table is because you, as a cultist, can't get through life without bringing it up. You would bring it up if, you, if someone said, Geez, it's cold today. Oh, that's climate change. Geez, it's hot today. Oh, it's climate change. Jesus, fire's burning. Oh, it's climate change. Oh, look, the fires went out. Gee, thanks, climate change. I have people in my life who are like this, except they think of themselves as born-again Christians. Nothing they do in their life can go untarnished with thanking their chosen de deity either. Right? This is where you stand. Just another group of cultists. And this is your indoctrination paper. Such discussions can be fraught if family members hold differing views. <gasps> differing views! <laughs> you may not all agree on the urgency, the urgency of dealing with climate change, or indeed whether it's happening at all. I was writing about climate change 15 years ago. And people insisted there was urgency then. They predicted we had three to seven years, depending which people you were listening to, uh, and before there was enough CO2 in the atmosphere that the turning point would be passed. And even then, if we'd stopped producing CO2, it would have taken three years for us to turn things around, which means things would have continued to get bad for another three years. You know what the predictions today say? I never hear about the turning point thing anymore. But the predictions that I've been hearing are three and seven years. Before we're doomed! 
doomed. Well, I passed my doomsdays 12 and 8 years ago. So maybe, maybe I have a reason to not think the urgency of climate change is something I'm going to get worked up about. I ran a walk against warming. I, I Two weeks ago, I was cleaning out paperwork and I found the police um, permit to run the march. I don't give a flying fuck anymore. I'm not even discussing whether or not I believe this science is true with anyone anymore. I am taking the piss out of assholes like you because you're assholes, not because I do or don't believe in what you're saying. But because the way you say these things, the activism you carry out, you're fucking assholes, that's all you are. You don't give a flying fuck. You know, Hollywood actors flying around, and royals and, and celebrities flying around the world in fucking private jets to go to their private islands. Where they're probably running generators to run their private electricity to um, discuss what they're going to do about climate change. Oh, you can all go fuck off. I can use less electricity talking to people across the world by using my computer. You ever tried that? You ever tried Skyping, social media, you know, private chat groups? <sighs> Sorry, I'm getting really waylaid by this because, um, because I don't discuss whether it's happening or not. I won't tell people whether it's happening or not. I just will not get involved in that argument. I will get involved in whether the fires had anything to do with climate change. And maybe they did. But there are so many other factors that can be thrown into that. I recently posted uh, information from last year which said the Victorian government, where a lot of the fires occurred up in the mountains, uh, well knew that bush clearing hadn't been taking effect um, or wasn't happening and that the fuel load on the floor was dangerous for the upcoming summer. They were reporting that in October. The Victorian government. As a Labour government, and I've got people in one ear saying, oh, climate change doesn't happen. I've got people in the other ear saying climate change is definitely happening. I've got people saying... Ah, oh, uh, the, the, the federal government's to blame for it all. And then I'm looking at the newspapers going, the only truth happening here is not being talked about. The Victorian government, a Labour government, is responsible for land care and fire control. And they knew in, on, in October last year, and probably before then, that the fuel load on the floors was a fire danger. And they did nothing. In fact, green activists were out there protesting if they tried to do any clearing or burning. And don't fucking get at me about your climate change causing this shit. And don't bring it up my Christmas dinner table. <laughs> uh, when I teach the art, uh, art of argumentation, uh, the art of argumentation is not the art of critical thinking, you twat. The art of critical thinking is questioning your own questions and your own answers to see that you have given the very best or asked the very best it's not about argumentation so you know nothing about critical thinking you are not a critical thinker you got no fucking clue i tell my students about the concept of point at issue yes Yes, you stay on the point, you focus on the point, you make sure that you are relevant to the point. And I can tell you now that if you were talking about bushfires and you were trying to stay on climate change, you were off the fucking mark. Talk about the fires. You can install discussions about climate change into that discussion, but the focus is not the fucking climate. Get it? But when debating emotive and conversational topics such as climate change, it's only emotive to you. And other people get worked up because you give them the shits. The point at issue can become lost. Yes, because the point at issue is not the fucking climate. The point at issue, if 
We are discussing bushfires at Christmas, and the smoke is not climate change. If you've dragged the conversation to climate change, well, maybe it is. And maybe the reason it's emotive is because you're giving people the shits. So what to do? We can learn much from Swedish climate uh, puppet. Puppet, I will not use this word about this person. This climate puppet, Greta Thunder, thunder Bum, whatever the fuck, I don't give a fuck. <sighs> All she does is fart shit out. A master of stain on topic. No, a master of stain on script. Other people write her script. She's a master of stain on the script. And you know why she's a master of stain on the script. There are videos out there of her being asked questions that are not on the script. And she can't fucking answer them. Even when the question is, how do you feel about this? She asks other people to answer for her. She's a fucking idiot. Her ability to stay on topic is written by other people. I too can read something and stay on the topic if I continue to read it. A simple unwavering message. That's right, that's how you indoctrinate. You just keep repeating the mantra. Keep repeating the mantra. Keep repeating the mantra. Keep repeating the mantra. Thunberg is in the Spanish capital Madrid for the week of COP25. A major conference of nations signed up to the Paris Climate Agreement. Yeah, the agreement is shits on first world nations and let the rest of the world keep producing CO2 as much as they like. I think the Chinese are allowed to increase their output by 40%. That would make Australia's output look like fucking a, a, tea, a flake of tea in a cup. A single flake in a cup. Maybe less. Maybe fucking half a flake. I mean... It's, it's nothing compared to China increasing its output by 40 cent, 40 percent and the rest of the, uh, the developing world being allowed to increase theirs. They've already bypassed Australia's output since the Paris agreements first started their talks. <sighs> Thunberg's solo school strike in Sweden last year. <laughs> Didn't she look like a fucking idiot sitting out there by herself? Oh, I'm on strike from school. Yes, retard. The other kids were probably happy you weren't there. Spoiled little rich bitch. In a typical rational style, she told supporters in Madrid, supporters in Madrid, because no one else is fucking listening to her, the protests have achieved nothing. Yes, the protests did achieve something. They pissed off people like me. Who 15 years ago stood on your side? But have slowly moved away from you until we got to the point where you turned into these activists and I fucking ran for the hills and I'll have nothing to do with you anymore. I changed my superannuation company because they started talking to me about activism and I was invested in alternate fuel technologies. Now I'm invested in whatever in the fuck my company wants to invest in and I don't care if it's fossil fuels because I'm not getting involved in your fucking activism. The lunatics can fuck off. And that's what you've achieved. A hell of a lot of people like me have turned away from you hardcore. Because global emissions are still rising. Yeah, you're talking to the people at the Paris Climate Agreement. The agreement says they can continue to rise. It says the developing world can continue to rise its emissions and the first world is meant to take its emissions back to make up for them. Yo, fuck yourself. You know what that means? What you're saying is we move all our industry to the third world where they can pollute and do whatever in the fuck they like and we'll all sit at home and fucking starve or be, you know, desk jockeys or, or work behind the counter at McDonald's and they're automating to the point where there's fucking no one working there anymore either. So, you know, what are we going to do? Well, the third world's allowed to develop away and take all our industry away and do all our fucking jobs we used to do. Because that's what you're saying. We're allowed to have economic collapse, but the third world is allowed to thrive. And I'm telling you now, the reason we thrive isn't that. 
economic stability, legal stability, a culture that allows those things to exist. That's where our, our nations come from. That's where our wealth comes from. You can build factories in those third world countries and all you will do is add wealth to the people who are keeping everyone else down. Now, China does it. China has uber-rich people holding on to so much of the nation's wealth that they are keeping everyone else at an economic level that suits the nation. China doesn't remain a developing country because China is poor. I tell you, I have lived there. My wife is from there. My family, my in-laws are there. My, I have friends there. They live in houses five, six times bigger than the one I live in. They're all brick and concrete. I live in a timber bloody a timber and fibro house in outback Australia. In the villages that my the village that my wife is from and in the, all the villages surrounding, they live in fucking mansions. This is not a poor nation, but the economy is kept low artificially. And that's what will happen in other developing countries. Because they don't have the wealth sharing that we have. In any case, let's get on with this. Her public statements consistently communicate a few key points. That's right. No arguments, no discussions. The planet is warming, we're responsible, you need to fix it. Hope is fine, but it's pointless without action. Neither of these two address any scientific ideas, principles, or anything else. This is purely chant the mantra. Chant the mantra. Chant the mantra. Global warming. Global warming. Until, you know, the indoctrination sticks. Economic concerns are irrelevant in the face of collapsing ecosystems. Now that is just fucking stupid. Because I can tell you now that there are people in this world too poor to give a flying fuck about climate change. It is an abstract thought the first world can afford to own. But in other places, they don't. In fact, there are people in the first world who are too poor to give a flying fuck about climate change. They would rather have a job and a meal. Thank you. You are fucking wrong that economic concerns are irrelevant. They are probably the single most relevant thing to any abstract thought being carried into society. Wealthy people can have abstract thoughts. If we do not fix this, future generations will remember us for our failures. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. You won't uh, Greta thumbs her uh, puts her thumb out and asks her wealthy supporters to give her a lift to the next event to to take her the next joint you know i i want to go to a fucking doctor here it's 350 kilometers do you think i'm just going out on the highway and thumbing a uh, go on social media you know to my five supporters and say ah oh, i'm your thumb my five supporters worldwide not here locally. Um, and I'm going to stick my thumb out and say, look, I just want to lift to the hospital, thanks. And they're going to fucking take me there? Greta can thumb her way across the world because she is wealthy. She has wealthy friends and supporters. Not only that, they buy first class train tickets. Then they miss the train, so they start thumbing. You know, I don't buy first class train tickets. Even travelling in China. I have bought a first class train ticket twice in my life. Well, I buy them here locally, but they cost 10 bucks more to get to Sydney. And I don't have to sit in a carriage where I'm likely to get tased or or um, one of the guys I worked with took a train to Sydney and the cops sprayed someone with mace in the carriage and it went through the air conditioning, macing everyone in the carriage. You don't get that if you spend the 10 bucks to go in first class. <laughs> But I'm not travelling across Europe first class or America first class. And that's what Greta does. So, uh, yes, without her, econo her wealthy economy, she couldn't be doing these things either. It matters. 
as to blaming future generations, get fucked. If you see problems, you work out the solutions. The fact that we didn't see problems, if there are problems, does not make us responsible for the change because we didn't see the need. Now, if you see the need, go to fucking school, learn something intelligent, work out how to do something useful. Stop fucking bumming around the world, you dumb bint. Each time Thunderbird, Thunderbird speaks, these issues are centre stage. Yes, nothing informative, nothing useful. What if one of your relatives at that table actually has an argument to make and you're just sitting there chanting mantra? No fucking help there, is there? And no wonder they get a motive at you because you're a fucking idiot and you're driving them nuts. She is not distracted by rhetoric, straw man arguments, personal abuse, or condescension or appeals to economic theory. Well, this is the assumption that the only arguments you'll get are rhetoric, straw man arguments, personal abuse, or condescending uh, by condescension or appeal to economic theory. The fact that you think these things are wrong means you're not willing to discuss them. You have just outright, right, critical thinker here, has just dismissed anything he doesn't want to hear. This is his critical thinking at its very best. If you come up with, um, well, the economic theory that I put forward, that climate is essentially an abstract thought, people um, surviving on next to nothing don't have time to try and understand climate science or get involved in climate activism. All they have time for is going to work and trying to make money. It is an abstract that only well-to-do people can, have, can afford to have. That's an economic, uh, an appeal to economy. But this guy has totally dismissed that without having to think about it, critically or otherwise. For example, in a TED talk, uh, fuck TED, I don't want to talk about TED. <laughs> Look, if Thunderbum was given a, a place at a TED talk, I, I have no respect for TED talks anymore. Uh, TEDx was already shit, but the stuff that was in TEDx has slipped into TED directly, and <laughs> it's just fucking lost all worth that stuff. Okay, I, look, I'm not going to go on. Basically, what he's saying is... Uh, well, he, he did... Oh, hang on. We'll, we'll go down here, back to the dinner table. We may not have Thunderbum's natural aptitude for staying on topic, for staying on script, but we can apply the lessons of our own conversations with to our own conversations with friends and family. Chant the mantra. Chant the mantra. Chant the mantra. Let's say I'm having an argument with a cranky uncle who I've given the shits about renewable electricity because he doesn't think it's managing to do the big things it was meant to do 10 years ago even though billions of dollars have been fed into it I might argue that we should train because because look 15 years ago between 10 and 15 years ago I'll, I'll put 10, 10 to 15 years the word was that we could replace all of Australia's uh, current demand and start working on future demand for uh, power if we started pumping money into renewables we could have it all done in two years we're now talking 10 years and we're not even looking at part of that and millions has gone into it as i said my retirement money was in it a lot of other people's retirement money in it there's a lot of money being pumped into it but we are well past that and we're nowhere like touching on um the base need so the base supply needs of this country it was meant to be two years we could do it if we put the money and the effort in well the money's there some effort's been put in no no look maybe your uncle doesn't think this is going to be quite as cap as possible as you think and as has been noted by other people if for any reason your renewables don't work you still need to have a functional um plant that can be turned on at the drop of a hat 
and that generally means gas, coal, or um, some other non-renewable fuel source that's easy to easy to burn, so that it heats up in an instant, gets the turbines running. Your uncle's getting pissed off at you. That's all I know. I might argue we should transition to wind and solar energy because it generates less carbon dioxide than burning fossil fuels. Actually, even the um, uh, solar panels are... Uh, I the, the amount of rare metals used in solar and wind generators mean they are not a best option either. They are just not going to be the cleanest, neatest option ever. Um, we... We, uh, we, I see. I'm for energy diversity. I think we need to break things up and have some diversity. And I think there's going to be pollution because we're humans, and everything we do has a cost. All right, everything a, a lion in the wild does has a cost. It takes down something in the wild. That something is no longer able to go on breeding with something else's. All right, so everything has a cost. My uncle might respond by saying i use any energy at all maybe he'll say when i stop driving cars or don't turn on your tv and he's probably dead fucking right you know because none of these like as i have brought up before you got fucking uh hollywood stars flying across america to go and protest climate and they get themselves all arrested and and everyone's going well big deal you all flew across America in your private jets to go and protest. I don't give a fuck if you got arrested. Good job. But this response is not addressing the point at issue that renewable energies generate less carbon and fossil fuels. Uh, yes, but maybe your uncle knows that there are other pollutants and other problems and that these things only produce energy on and off and that when they don't produce energy we still need to be burning fossil fuels get it maybe your uncle knows a bit more than what you're trying to straw man him with the renewable energy uh, generates less carbon fossil yeah it is ta talking about something else yes it is um any use of power is bad well look i for years as as an environmentalist looking at our energy consumption looking at the chance that there were things like climate change occurring in our world my argument was that we saved more energy and stopped more co2 output by using energy saving light bulbs which in their own way are extremely polluting but we saved power which meant we didn't have to build extra power plants for a while we had so not halted but we had slowed down our increasing consumption just by using energy efficient devices i think there is a lot to be had for using any power a lot less i don't think your uncle's wrong you wouldn't need to build as many windmills digging up as many rare metals in china and wherever wherever else if you weren't using that electricity in the first place really it's not so much about using power as how that power is generated no it is entirely 100 percent about using power because if you weren't using it we wouldn't need to generate it for you it is 100 percent about consumer demand you know that thing that you said earlier you hated did you oh consumerism anyway i know it's going to come up i know you're going to say oh consumerism because that's what you fucking communists are all about but consumerism is why electricity is produced to make your electrical devices work moving off the point at uh, at issue is a classic straw man yes mr straw man you straw your uncle quite happily here so 
uh, you've built him up as a dumb fuck on a, a one. He's got a one subject, and you can't include incorporate it into yours. So you've really gone to some effort to straw man, or at least not address the topics that your uncle's talking about. You're going back to chant the mantra, chant the mantra, chant the mantra, attack. When the argument is misrepresented and argued at that point, no, it is not a misrepresentation. You don't understand the power debate. Power is not just about how you make it. Power is also about how you use it. You don't understand the question. You don't understand this topic. You don't understand what the fuck you're talking about. You think you you think you know what a straw man is for fuck's sake. You don't. Keep the argument on track and keep it both civil and productive. It is a key skill in critical thinking. Oh, fucking hell. Don't pretend you know what critical thinking is. It is helped by making sure everyone is clear about what the point at issue actually is. Yes, power. Bring in the conversation back to the point where it strays where you try to make it about production of power or at least acknowledging that we are now talking about something else yes you don't want to talk about use of power so you want to only make it a one-sided power discussion calling out any misrepresentation of the point yes because you think that usage doesn't equal production you think there's no consumer demand yeah, get out of my office if you can't keep quiet. Sorry, there's a four-year-old in here who just won't shut up. Told you my family couldn't be trusted to stay quiet. Uh, this will help keep the integrity of, integrity of the argument intact and avoid it degenerating into an exchange of ideological blows. If you need extra help, my colleagues have produced a paper to help you chant the mantra. Chant the mantra chant the mantra i gotta warn you these things always turn out to be indoctrination if you really want to know what's going on do not go to his colleagues look at everything you can look at look at when i wrote about climate change for i, I was a, i wrote an environment column for a newspaper and i I ran a walk against warming and I was on side with the early science about climate change when I was learning about it. I, I was in it before before the whole, um, you know, great big rush into making videos by that American politician guy. I can't remember his fucking name and don't care. Um, but um, Clown had got too many things wrong. Um... I was into it a bit before that and I read everything including the global cooling that was discovered here in Australia in the 80s which was you know tied to climate change roughly and and I read all the climate change and I read the denialism and admittedly the early denialism was all about how the Bible and God were the only things that changed the climate and there's no argument in that so you're left with one-sided argument where you've got people producing papers that say this is what's happening. But since that time, a lot of information has come out about how incorrect the information was, how fudged the figures were, and how there are other factors involved which are not being given consideration, like forest fires having excessive fuel not just the fact that we've been in an extremely long drought period and nobody seems to have wanted to equip themselves for it. <sighs> if you follow these sorts of people, right, he, apparently this clown is a lecturer in critical thinking and director of the UQ Critical Thinking Project at the University of Queensland. This indoctrinator, this person who will instruct you in how to indoctrinate, 
this person teaches critical thinking at a university. This isn't critical thinking. This is pure indoctrination. I like to think of myself as a critical thinker, and I know that whoever you are, critical thinking is going to have... You're going to slip into bias, and you're going to fight hard not to slip into bias, but that's the point of critical thinking, is to try and work out where you've presented bias and how to alleviate that bias from your arguments in future, or even in the current discussion. This clown doesn't have any will to do that. He starts out by saying... Uh, Oh, I can't even remember where it was, back here somewhere, where he said, um, you know, the arguments are all rhetoric, straw man arguments, personal abuse or condescension or appeals to economic theory. I can abuse the fuck out of this child all I like. She presents herself in an adult in adult forums as a speaker to adults about adult things. She presents herself in that instance i will treat her as the adult she wants to be treated as and if you environmentalists think we should treat her like a child then why the fuck did you put a child up in an adult discussion so talking to adults from an adult platform that most of we adults can't even achieve don't you fucking re tell me you've got to respect her being 16 or 17 or whatever she's gonna AI out age your usefulness anyway soon enough so fucking who cares but I can personally abuse this child while still making arguments against her. You understand that abuse doesn't automatically mean there's no argument. But I know how people like this work. I went through this for years as an atheist with theists, with, with Christians, later with Muslims. It's the same fucking story. Any time you make a personal attack on them, uh, or you use use a naughty word, they write it off as abuse and they stop listening. Well, I don't give a flying fuck because I'm not here for you. <laughs> You're a fucking asshole, um, and, um, and I don't care whether I'm talking to that child or this imbecile who thinks he can teach critical thinking. He can't critical think himself. Can't write it on a piece of. Can't write it for a bloody news outlet. Uh, just nothing more to say. Nothing more to say. Fucking hell. I am an environmentalist. I still think of myself as an environmentalist. I think the environment... Well, I think almost everyone. I, I think the most radical right-wingers, I think a few people who run factories that pollute the fuck out of the world may not see it as being the most important thing in their world. But I think for most of us, we understand that we want the world to be a healthy place for us to live. I have been involved in environmentalism. I've been a known amongst environmentalists. I spend most of my days these days talking about fucking idiots like this and telling them to fuck off. Because anything that good could come out that could come out of environmentalism is fucked up by people like this and it's part of why I no longer participate. I'm the anti-theocrat. This has been another one. May your gods remain fictional and I'll see you in the next one. Have a ripper.